boxing runs on my on my mother's side. Everybody, my grandfather and his brothers were all boxers. And I remember my first lesson with my grandfather. I was about six, seven. Take your right hand, put it on this side of your face, and then cover your shoulder. Use your shoulder to cover the other side of your chin. And that way, he can't hit you on this side, and he can't get hit on this side. Take your right hand, hug your front of your stomach. That way, you can't get hit in the body. And say goodbye to your nose. <laughs> put my younger brother in it, because. Uh, I couldn't afford to pay for all of us, my other two brothers. So I put him in at first, and uh, I watched him in class. And then I, when he come home, I take we go on the side of the house. I says, "All right, show me what you learned." He goes, ah, "I can't remember." I go, ah, "Man, I'm not wasting this money on for you not to remember." <clears throat> so I go back to him. I sit there and make him pay attention in class. So then when he did learn something, then we went back to the house, back to the house, side of the house, and then. He showed me what he learned. So my little brother was actually my first karate teacher. But then uh, later on, there was a there was a one inch ad in the newspaper, and my mom had she found it. She goes, Frankie, look at this. She goes, this is karate instructors needed. I said, let me see that. So I'm looking at it, and sure enough, it says karate instructors needed, no experience necessary, earn up to seven hundred dollars a month. And I was like, dang, that's seven hundred dollars. Man, that was a lot of money then. <clears throat> so I went to go see it, and it was Ed Parker. Frank was a young man when he met Mr. Parker. And Mr. Parker opened up the school to Frank. Live here. It's okay. You know, you got a bed, you got a couch, you got a shower. You got a place to sleep. You got a roof over your head. You know, as karate players, that embeds the rest of your life. That person then becomes your dad, so to speak. So the bond was extremely tight. I used to introduce him that way. He goes, you know, I used to go around and say, uh, like at demonstrations, you know what? Everybody in the martial arts is a big family. And since Ed Parker is the father of American karate, I want to introduce you to my dad, Ed Parker. <laughs> Frank Trejo. <laughs> Frank Trejo is crazy. <laughs> Get over here. Spar with Frank? Yeah. God, no. He was a crazy dude, but he was a cool dude. He was a good motivator. He'd been around Mr. Parker for a long time. And I like, I like his attitude when, when it comes to theory of the theory of fighting. I like his attitude when it comes to competition, period, because, you know, he was a guy who was a team guy. And he believed, he didn't believe just in himself. He believed in if we're going to do something, we all got to do it together. Frank got his black belt in 1975, so from about 1975 to 77, 78, right in that time, he, he was one of the only guys out there still wearing that crest. And every time he'd win a you know, championship, he'd hold that trophy and point to that crest so they all see who's winning this thing, you know. Frank was probably one of the best tournament fighters ever.
He is one of the first uh, black belts of Mr. Parker that has been with him forever, all from the time he was a teenager all the way up until the time that Master Parker passed away. If any man knows the system, that's the man that knows the system. Because I knew what I wanted to be when I was in, like in the third grade, and that was I wanted to be a coach. So I, from that day on, because because of my coach, because he's such a such a cool dude, I just like I want to be like him when I grow up. To be able to keep this elbow tucked in, keep the right hand right here, just like this. And when you throw your jab, make sure it goes straight ahead. And come right back. Don't let it drop. Love, love, love Frank Trejo. He is a great sensei, and not just because he knows Kenpo as well as he does, not just because he knows boxing as well as he does, not just because he he was probably one of the first people that, you know, did some MMA with Gene LaBelle. I mean, he had an amazing history, but he's encouraging. He makes everyone believe that this is something that they can do and be good at it, and they can as far as uh, my lifetime work, this is all I've ever done my whole life. I mean, about um, almost 40 years now. to you with only karate, my empty hands. I have no weapons, but should I be forced to defend myself, my principles or my honor, should it be a matter of life or death, of right or wrong, and here are my weapons, karate, my empty hands.